In astrology, everyone always talks about your sun sign, but nobody talks about what house your sun is in. In this video, we're going through the sun in astrology through the houses. Also, right now, readings are on sale. I've extended it through the 29th. Click the link below to get in on it. If you're watching this after the sale ends, then click the link below to get on my list so you will be the first to know the next time I do a sale in the future. All right, let's get into the sun through the houses, starting with the first house. So the first house represents our life, represents our life direction, it represents our personality and our identity. So when your sun is in the first house, you shine being you. Now, that might sound like a cop out for those of you with this house placement. So let me go into a little more depth on this. You're going to shine when you feel like you have control over your life direction because the sun represents our our core essence, our, you know, kind of who we are, but also you can never ignore the needs of the sun. So you shine when your personality gets to be featured. Another thing you could think of is the first house is kind of like the first impression we make on a person. Some people will call the ascendant, which is where the first house starts. Some people will call it the, um, you know, the mask we wear. And this is partly true in my opinion. But um, basically, if you have your son in the first house, you shine when you're making that first impression. You shine when you are meeting someone for the first time. You shine when because the sun represents our ability to be seen, our ability to be the center of attention, you really can be the center of attention. Now, I don't mean that in a negative way. Being able to be a central figure in an organization, uh, being able to be seen and have a lot of eyes on you is not something everyone can handle. So because your son is in the first house, you can handle a lot of eyes on you. As a matter of fact, um, one of the significations, if your son happens to be the ruler of your 10th house, and it is in the first house, would be that you could be the face of a brand. Uh, so you can think of it as you are the face of the area of life that your son rules. Now, if you don't know what that means or anything, then that's okay. Let's just keep going. Um, other things that the first house represent is our actual physical body. So what does that mean if your son is in the house of the body? Well, you might have a more bright disposition. You might have a sunny appearance. You might um, shine more when you are active. You might be happier doing things that are active. You might be happier moving your body. You might be happier using your body a lot or just doing things that are physical and being active. Not not everyone with the sun in the first house will be active, but since the sun is our life force energy and you have it in a house that makes it a lot stronger because by house, the house will strengthen or weaken a planet. Um, that means sun in the first house, uh, you've got a lot of energy. And so um, it's good. It's good to have a lot of energy and to be able to direct that energy to something. Now, keep in mind, other planets here are going to change the flavor a little bit, but that is what I have for sun in the first house. If your sun is in the second house, this means you shine when it comes to stuff, when it comes to money, and when it comes to possessions. This does not mean that you will magically be like an investor, although the because the sun represents our focus and our life direction, it is possible you spend a lot of your time or your energy focusing on money. It is also possible that you are going to feel your best or feel like it's just most natural for you to handle matters of money, matters of the physical world, material possessions, things like that. So Having the sun in the second house brings positivity to your finances. It doesn't guarantee you're going to like be a millionaire, but it does guarantee that you will be focused on trying to be a millionaire or focused on wanting to secure, you know, have security. And uh, so usually there's some kind of strength there of some kind, whether it is an innate understanding of how many works whether it is caring about your appearance and like your clothes and the things that you have and the things that you own, or whether it is um, 
that desire to build wealth possibly. Also, you know, I think of the second house more in an evolutionary sense of the house of our own being focused in. Okay, so to me, the second eighth house axis is the axis of my money or your money, but also um, focusing on my own goals and my own world and my own thoughts and my own priorities versus that eighth house of focusing in on the other person's goals, thoughts, or priorities. Sometimes people with a stacked second house have a harder time letting people in just depending on what planets are there. To me, the sun doesn't automatically do this, but it is a placement that could uh, possibly bring some focus on being able to focus in on your own things, your own goals, your own stuff. And again, the sun can shine a light on your stuff. So it could be that you are good at taking care of your things. We have the sun in the second house where it's like you want your things to shine and you shine when you're taking care of your stuff and what kind of stuff that's going to depend on a lot of other things. So uh, overall though, the sun in the second will have you have a focus on your own um, not boundaries, your own, um, values. Okay. So you shine when you are living a life that is true to your own values. And you might think, well, doesn't everyone, uh, no, not everyone does. (laughs) So moving on now to the next one, which is the third house. If you have your son in the third house, this means you shine in matters of the mind. So this kind of means there's a lot of focus on your own, um, learning, you know, your own education, your own ability to have a conversation. You probably shine or feel, you know, feel like you're at your best when you're having a great conversation, when you're able to communicate what you know. The third house though represents a lot of other things. So we're talking about siblings. We're talking about cars. We're talking about your local environment, your neighbors. Um, those kind of things all go in that house. So when the sun is here, maybe, you know, you shine when you're, uh, in your neighborhood and you're like on your way from place to place, uh, with the sun in the third house, this could also impact the way you drive. Maybe you're happy when you're driving, uh, or you feel optimistic when you're driving, or you like taking road trips or just something along those lines. You might feel, um, again, like you shine when you're in the car in some way. Uh, So that could just be like if you're in the car and you're talking on the phone, somehow that, you know, conversation is more positive or you feel more positive while you're doing it. Um, The third house is also going to be, again, our own. uh, It's also elementary school. So you could have shined in elementary school. It doesn't mean you peaked in elementary school, but Sometimes people with their son in the third could possibly be like a star student or got a lot of awards when you were young um, in in elementary school. Um, That is a possibility. And siblings. So now if you don't have siblings, this is not going to apply to you. But if you do have siblings, you probably have at least one sibling who is a source of positivity and optimism and, and either they are sunny in their nature, you know, either they are, um, someone who the world, the world revolves around them, or they're like almost like a celebrity, or they think they're a celebrity or, um, or they just have the solar qualities of, again, like commanding attention and always being surrounded by people. And, and I don't know, always taking pictures of them themselves or, you know, things that someone like that would do, or, or, you know, you could also have a sibling who's just either a little bit famous or well-known or, um, again, just always getting attention. So uh, it could also be that you have a very lovely or um, positive relationship with a sibling. So there's other possibilities for the third house, but those were the major things. And and really the major thing uh, with the son and the third is there's a need for you to communicate what you know and to be able to be heard, to be understood, to understand others. This is going to be a central focus of your life with the sun in the third house. Let's move on now to the sun in the fourth house. The fourth house is the house of our home and our uh, emotional foundations. So 
When the sun is in the fourth house, there is a focus on family of origin. This does not mean you have a great childhood and you're so happy about it and you just get along well with your parents. For some people, it is. For others, it's the opposite. For other people, that inward focus on the family dynamics comes from uh, the problems that started before that. And so um, sometimes it's that. Sun in the fourth Um, can also sometimes mean, not always, but sometimes it can mean that your father has a really central role in your um, upbringing. Uh, Not that, you know, how do I put it? Yeah, that's what it means. Your father has a central role in your upbringing, has a lot of influence on who you are. That could be because you end up being like them. Um, It could be that they end up having a stronger role in your life than the mother, or it could be that they have a central role in messing it up. (laughs) It just depends. I'm sorry, that's not funny, but (laughs) I try to keep it real on this channel. So other things the sun in the fourth house can do, and um, if you have this one, then you're like me. In the whole sign, I do have sun in the fourth. Actually, I have sun in the fourth in both. Um, But yes, this is my placement too. And it it really does bring uh, an ability to focus on um, the inner life and the inner world. Now, there's good and bad to that. The good is that you can sort of shine when you're in these deep conversations about people's feelings. You can shine. You can feel like you shine your most when you're at home. I feel like I shine the most when I'm right here in front of this camera in my house, (laughs) in my room where no one else can be. And you might feel like that. You might feel more like you shine uh, from home. You shine at home. You like being at home. Sometimes you can just be a homebody where not just, but you can be a homebody where sure you'll go to work. And then as soon as work is over, you're going to come right back home. Um, There's something about home that just feels comforting. It makes you feel like you can be who you truly are. Also, going back to, there's a there's a, a depth uh, and an ensoulment and a w- inner warmth that I think uh, Sun in the 4th tend to have. I see this also sometimes with Sun in the 8th. We'll talk about that later. But there is this ability to, again, shine in the, this these quiet private places. So if you have your son in the fourth, you might feel like you shine more when you are one-on-one with people or when you really, really get to know people, just because that's when you can talk about those private things that the son in the fourth is going to prefer talking about. You can shine when it comes to connecting with emotions and, you know, what makes people feel safe and okay. Um, Those are all other things the sun in the fourth can do well at. So let's move on now to the sun in the fifth house. If you have your sun in the fifth house, you shine um, in a few ways, in a really fun way. So this is a fun placement to have because the fifth house is a fun house. So you shine when you are enjoying yourself. Now, this can be positive or it can go toward, you know, um, extremes. If it goes toward extremes, this would be like someone who maybe is a little too, gambles a little too much or takes a little too much risk or um, is, you know, has like too much pleasure seeking, right? Because the sun will just bring you to that. But it it doesn't have to be out of balance. If it's not out of balance, this placement can just make you a lot of fun because you shine when you're having fun, when you're enjoying yourself, when you're watching a movie, when you're um, eating your favorite food, when you're having sex, when you're flirting. The fifth house is flirtation. So if you have your son in the fifth, this is a good one for being able to flirt. And usually people who have good flirting placements are like me. What? Um, so stop that. <laughs> uh, we, we don't always know our gifts. So if you find, usually you just find it, it doesn't, it's not hard to flirt. You know, it's not hard to, you know, chit chat with someone of, you know, someone you're interested in or someone you think is cute or whatever. So just know if your son is here and you don't have other planets uh, messing it up, then you can flirt and do that. Use your gifts, people. <laughs> also, the fifth house is the house of children and creativity. So, uh, another thing that the fifth house is that some people don't know is 
self-employment. It's our ability to create something out of nothing. So that does include children. It includes our creativity and it includes our self-employment. If you want to be self-employed and you have this placement, it's a good one to have because it's like you have the life force energy that you can pour into a topic you're passionate about. You can feed, it's like you can feed the business. The The sun and the fifth gives you an ability to kind of, um, in my opinion, sort of infuse energy into things that that are created. So Sun in the Fifth could be very creative and it doesn't have to be making art, right? Creative can be making music, it can be making food, it can be any form of creativity there is, writing, whatever. Um, But Sun in the Fifth will kind of bring more fun and more joy to that. Also Sun in the Fifth will, you'll shine as a parent. And so if you have the Sun in the Fifth and you have kids, it doesn't mean you will. But if you have kids, then you probably are good at like being the authority of your kids. They probably come to you when they need stuff and you probably direct them and tell them what to do. I can just imagine someone with son in the fifth being like, okay, everyone, we're doing our project. And you're like organizing them and you're like the boss of them, you know, like really stepping up into that leadership role because the son in our solar system, everything revolves around it, right? So if you are a creative person and you have the sun here, you could um, be like an inspiration to other creative people. And that's kind of all I really think of when it comes to sun in the fifth. Moving on now to sun in the sixth. If you have your sun in the sixth house, then this is one of the more challenging places for it because the sixth house is like uh, stuff we got to do. So when do you shine when your sun is in the sixth, when you are doing chores? And I know no one wants that to be what they shine at, but (laughs) I'm just telling you the truth, people. So you can shine when you are doing chores. That doesn't mean you have to do chores all the time, but maybe you like them. Maybe you like doing the dishes. Maybe you like uh, working in community or in collaboration with other people in a sense of service. Maybe you enjoy uh, some kind of community service or some kind of job where you are doing like a service to the community. That could be being a nurse or something where you're taking care of people because the sixth house is health. Although this wouldn't be my first uh, thing I would say for this. Um, But it could also be like doing healing work or doing um, work that, you know, you shine when talking about nutrition. You shine when you feel like you are physically healthy or you feel like your daily habits are good. You you shine when it comes to doing your daily habits. So the sun here could mean you are really naturally good or naturally want to focus on having the right routine or having the right macros and micros or or having the right, you know, routine in terms of your physical um uh you know, your your exercise and stuff that you want to do that works for you. You might find that you're happier when you do X, Y, Z kind of exercise every day and and that you're focused on that. Um, There are worse planets you could have in the sixth house. Um, Sometimes, though, uh, you shine at work. You shine when you're working. And that's one of the downsides of having a sixth house planet, a benefic in the sixth house. There's, There's other problems with it, too. We won't get into. But um, is that you don't always get the outcome of the shining, if that makes sense. Like your your life force energy goes to the sixth house stuff, which is like working chores, taking care of stuff for other people um, and your own health. But it's like you don't really get riches from it, right? You don't get like lots of good things back. You just do it. You just focus on it. So if, if, you know, with the sun and the six, it's possible you could have a manager position, but if you are, it's almost like you're the manager, but it's for someone else and they're really in charge and you just have to manage all the people. And then, you know, it's like, you don't get the the glory when your son is in the six. Doesn't mean you can never be recognized, but, um, this one recognition, your ability to be recognized will suffer a little bit. So moving on now to the seventh, sun in the seventh, you shine in love, you shine in relationships. And the way this works, usually people with sun in the seventh usually are not single for long. Uh, That's usually how it goes. People with sun in the seventh also usually are just focused on partnership. They're, They're other focused and which means they will end up going to great lengths to keep a relationship. They will end up willing to do what it takes to be in a relationship. Sometimes they will, um, 
have their partner be like a center of attention kind of a person. Um, So it's like your partner could be a manager, they could be a leader, they could be a famous person or someone slightly well known, not always, or they can just have that sort of um, center of attention, life of the party, everyone wants to be their friend kind of vibe to them. You could gravitate toward positive, optimistic people who are pouring their energy into their creating their world. And you could feel like you are in their orbit sort of when you're around them. Um, I would say sun in the seventh is a good place for this sun because it it strengthens it. Now, this is also going to strengthen your ability to be seen depending on what sign your sun is in. But you know, it'll make the ability for you to get attention for things better in general. Um, So that is what I have for sun in the seventh. So now moving on to the sun in the eighth. When your sun is in the eighth house, uh, this one is tricky because it's another one where it's the ability to shine is hindered a little bit because the eighth house represents merging with other people. And so when your solar energy, you know, your life force energy is in a house that represents other people. It doesn't mean people take your life force energy. It actually means that you your your ability to be seen sort of can be swallowed up by whoever you're around, which means sometimes when you have an influence on something, it'll be where you shine is a lot like the fourth house in these deeper conversation, not conversations, yeah, conversations, deeper conversations, deeper intimacy, when you connect with someone on a deep level, or when you work in a group or work with people in a collaborative way. So you shine in partnerships, but it's different than the seventh house where it's like partnerships are just good. It's a little bit more like you shine where no one can see. No one can see when, you know, someone's dog dies and they call you, but you're there, you know, or, or, you know, the eighth house is also intimacy. So it's sex. It's also other people's money. You know, these things that in your public life, no one's going to know you're doing. And so Sometimes sun in the eighth will have a harder time getting credit for their accomplishments, especially when they work in a group, because it's like that solar energy, that life force energy, it kind of just gets put into the other person. So the way to work with this is to try to make sure you are around the right people who will give you the credit um, and, you know, are on your side too. Uh, so that's probably enough on that one. Uh, there, There's more on all of these, but... Uh, we're going to move on to sun in the ninth. If you have your sun in the ninth, you shine when you are being intuitive. You shine when you're traveling abroad. You shine, you might shine when you're speaking another language. You might love knowledge and shine when you are learning something and and studying something. Uh, It doesn't mean like you're the teacher's pet. It means that you are going to light up more when you have something you can study, something you can learn, or when you are doing something related to faith. So that could be um, when you are like, uh, you know, studying your Bible or learning about your specific uh, belief system, or when you are connected to a group of people who believe the same way, or, you know, when you just feel um, close to a higher power, that is part of where you shine. And you might shine in being able to see God in everything, right? Because the ninth house is the house of God. It is the house of faith. It's the meaning of life. So you're going to shine when you can see how what you're doing is meaningful and feel like what you're doing is meaningful. This is the, this is a placement, any planets in the ninth are like placement of the seeker, you know, the the person who wants to go beyond what they've known to, to learn a new thing and to have a new experience and to relate differently to, you know, what it's all for to be able to answer the question, why are we all here? So the sun in the ninth house doesn't necessarily mean you always have those answers, but that you will probably always be seeking them. Um, that is the sun in the ninth house. There's other things the sun in the ninth can, can signify. So that would be, um, maybe focus on the law or legal matters in your life throughout your life. Focus on justice, doing what's right. Focus on, um, learning and and a quest, like going on some kind of quest in life and kind of treating life like it is a quest or, um, 
publishing as well can go in the ninth house. So moving on now to the 10th house, which is the house of career, fame, uh, people call it that. Uh, I I don't love using that word, but I just did. (laughs) So 10th house, also the house of your legacy and um, what the world wants from you. So when your son is in the 10th house, this is a strong place for it, a very, very strong place for it. And it usually means in your work, you will be known for what you do. It doesn't mean you will be known for what you want to be known for or that you are going to be famous, famous, but it does kind of give the idea that you are going to have a leadership role or a role where you have a lot of eyes on you in the workplace at some point in life. Now, what kind of role is going to depend a lot on what sign your son is in? But that sun in the 10th house is a strong placement for if you want to have your own business, if you want to be career oriented, you know, if you want to make a difference in your work, uh, if you want to do something where you are seen by a lot of people, if you want to be famous, uh, the sun in the 10th is a good, good, good placement. Now, remember, the sun commands attention. So there are other ways to get attention other than being famous, right? So this is why being a manager or in a leadership position is part of the sun is because when you're a manager or you're the leader, everything revolves around you and everyone's coming up to you and they need something from you, right? They need your attention Uh, and and you're giving, you're, they're giving you their attention. So there's more than one way that attention can show up in your public life. But when you're, you know, in the right job, sun in the 10th, you're going to feel, you're going to shine there. You're going to, um, and that doesn't mean look good always. It can, but it can also mean do well, you know, doing well when you have a strong, powerful, uh, important, so to speak, role in your career. So moving on now to sun in the 11th house. If you have your sun in the 11th, this means you shine in groups. You shine uh, in groups of people and you shine when you are going toward your hopes and dreams. So sun in the 11th could be that you like to be in a crowd. You like going to um, events where there are a lot of people. That can be any kind of event, any kind of crowd. This could be at some point in your life, you are up speaking in front of people, but it doesn't have to be. And there's lots of people who speak and who don't have this placement. So it doesn't mean you have to, but you can. And um, so by having the sun in the 11th, it's like you're more likely when you are in a crowd to have all eyes on you, you are more likely to in your group of friends, be the one everyone's focusing on or looking at or talking about, you know, the one who is just everyone's like rallying around, um, if that makes sense. So there's that. There's also uh, the shining when reaching your hopes and dreams. Well, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to reach your hopes and dreams. Not all of us do. But when the sun is in the 11th, you're going to be happier. uh, And it's going to feel more natural if you are working towards some kind of dream or goal in life. With the sun in the 11th, there's also the evolutionary perspective here of um, the 11th house. To me, when I think of the 11th house, I think of uh, like the king or the celebrity archetype of giving the people what they want, giving the world what they want, giving society what it wants. So with the sun here, it's like you might naturally want to give society what it wants. You might care about the needs of the people. That is a possibility. You could also find that, especially if you are a creative person in any capacity or have your own business, sometimes people with stronger 11th houses than 5th houses will find that um, they have to work extra hard to claim and go after what they want because there's like a part of them that feels like they just want permission. Now, this isn't the strongest with the sun. This is much stronger if you have like Pluto here, for example. Um, But the sun could factor into this where it's like, um, to balance out that uh, that strong illuminated 11th house is to illuminate the fifth house of what do you want? You know, what do you want? What art do you want to make? What business do you want to have? So, um, the, but the ability to kind of cater to a crowd or adjust to an, a crowd um, in a positive way is there with the sun in the 11th. So moving on now to sun in the 12th. Now this one is another one that could feel a bit like it is challenging. One of the biggest challenges for Sun in the 12th is um, it's not easy to get recognized 
when you have your sun in the 12th and it's harder to see your own light because things that are in the 12th house, you have to look harder to be able to see. Now, if you have learned how to, you know, work through things, if you have worked on your own psychology in any capacity with this placement, you may be like, yes, I can see my own light. So it just means that it won't come naturally. You'll have to try to see what's what's good about you and what you light up. Now, the sun in the 12th also has some gifts with it that are very special. The 12th house is very special. And that is where you shine is in 12th house matters. 12th house matters are things like spirituality, mental health, um, addictions, places where we undo ourselves. Now, does that mean you're going to undo yourself or have some self-sabotaging tendencies? Maybe, maybe. But if you do with sun in the 12th, overcoming those that recovery is where you shine, recovery from those things. And there's a special gift that, in my opinion, 12th house people have that no one else has, which is the ability to kind of help another 12th house person. You know, like they say uh, in, in the recovery programs where, you know, one alcoholic can help another alcoholic where nobody else can just because they know what it's like and they've been there. So having the sun in the 12th house um, d- usually does mean there is something in life you'll need to recover from, but that the recovery from that thing is where you shine. Um, so I'm not saying it's good, you know, I'm not going to be like that, but that, that there is um, something you can illuminate. You can illuminate the darkness. You can illuminate the path to recovery for others. And, and that recovery might be conventional. It may not. Other things that the 12th house represents to me are things like spirit guides. So if you have spirit guides or you work with um, angels or any kind of like um, unseen forces, which is what the 12th house is, um, you shine when working with those. So maybe helping other people find their guides or seeing spirit guides or, you know, because that the whole idea of that 12th house of being things we don't see unless we look really hard or we know how to look. So 12th house people, especially sun in the 12th, it's like you can light up those things. You can light up the darkness. You can light up people's subconscious minds. And, and if you choose to, you can use that power for good. <laughs> but I do, I do like to say that for the 12th houses, especially because there's some negative connotations with the 12th house. And with the sun being our ego, our life force energy, having it be in the 12th house means that only 12th house people are going to recognize you or, or, you know, you, you might be recognized more when somehow your work is behind the scenes in some way. It doesn't mean you can't like go on a show and like advertise your business or you'll never get recognized, but that, um, you might have to kind of fit it to be a 12th house way for that recognition to really take hold. And for example, sometimes I see Leo Midheaven people with their son in the 12th. And usually there it's like they're they're doing work that is seen, it is featured, but they're working behind the scenes to do it. So they're not recognized, but their work is. Um, so sometimes that can happen too, just in that particular case. Either way, son in the 12th, you know, I also think of the 12th house as the void right? That the place in life that we all get to sometimes where we don't know what to do and we can't find the external path. We can't, there's no compass and we're just sort of floating in this in-between space. We all have times in life where we have 12th house transits where this happens to us. But people with sun in the 12th, they have this special relationship with living in the void or, or or being in the void. And if you're a 12th house sun, I don't know what it feels like, but you know what I'm talking about. And it's, you can light up that void for other people. And that is when my phone stopped working. So thank you all so much for tuning in. You can check out the Planets Through the Houses series. I have a whole playlist on different planets, so check that out. And also you can book a private reading or join one of my courses using the link below. Thank you all so much for all the love you send my way and everything you do to make this channel grow. And I will see you all beautiful souls in the next video. Bye.